Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to show you. You know, and they see there's my gorilla mask and everything. There's a skeleton, there's the Frankenstein I got from Eric Gregla from Philadelphia. Over here, down in here. Oh, by the way, here's the megaphone I used to use when I used to stream. Oh, this is the one Andrew gave me because mine, the uh, battery, I got messed up. But this is the one, this is my original one over here. Andrew Chief Moritz uh, gave me that other one. Yeah, and he passed away in like 2004, April 2004, age 57. May he rest in peace. Him and I used to stand across the street bridge. Well, I started doing it and then he joined me. I said, I go, Jesus saves. Ask Jesus in your heart now. Ask Jesus to come in your heart now. Amen, brother. <laughs> I used to do that. Yeah. Jesus says, I wait my Bible, you know, you know, by the way, here's my Hoffman's quick gain weight power, I still got it, man, I got, actually, this is the last one, I got this, this is Hoffman's quick gain weight calorie supplement, I, I, I used to take when I was uh, going to high school, but I got the small cans, they had a big can on sales, like the last one, I had two of these left at the old um, Ligonier, no, not Ligonier, Latrobe, Pennsylvania Pharmacy, when he back back in 2001, and they closed down like about a year later, then it became like a resale shop, this guy just sells stuff, old stuff but it's no longer and by the way when it was the pharmacy that's the home of the original banana split they that's where they, that's where they made the first banana split was in Latro, pennsylvania the Latro pharmacy well the same location it used to be like a, a soda shop an ice cream shop <clears throat> that's right that's natural gas better out there and then the other one yeah <laughs> anyway but uh, yeah the guy told me and he gave me the flyer i got a flyer in my in my the good the the guy in the the pharmacist in there there was a pharmacy when I went in there in two thousand one he said uh that's the home of the first banana split so uh you know I got a flyer tell him but you know now it's like I think they just sell like uh, it's like they just sell like they sell like st old stuff in there you know it's like a resale shop but there it is Bob Hoffman's quick gain weight they sell this back in the seventies and this was past its expiration now it's all rusty because. Or we got flooded. But I, I, I finished it before it got flooded. I mean, I finished this like about phew, back in 2001. I went through really good. It tastes like malted milk, man. And even though it was past its expiration date when I got it by about a year, it still tasted great. It was it was okay. But um, they don't sell anymore because Bob Hoffman died. Bob Hoffman used to train uh, champions, you know, weightlifting. He, he set weightlifting records. For, he was like over 60, and he still was lifting weights in good shape from... Uh, I think it was Iron Man or Strength and Beauty magazine. Strength, Strength and Health. Strength and Health. I used to buy that at the store. They gave bodybuilding tips. This is before they started, you know. To, now, now a lot of it's all just a lot of promos for supplements. And they got articles on the championships. But it used to be where you could order courses from Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva, the myth whom I met, who beat Arnold the first time, and Mr. Olympia. And then Arnold beat him the next time. He beat him in 69, Sergio. And then... Schwarzenegger beat him in 70, a real close one. A lot of people thought Sergio had it, but it was close. It was like, it was like, it was really, like Sergio got second. And F Big Lou Ferrigno, he, he said Sergio would scare you because he had so many muscles, he'd scare, he'd freak guys out. He had a robe on before the contest, and then when he got out there, he'd take the robe off, and they'd see all these bulging muscles. That short guy, 5'8", but he's huge, you know, like 240 pounds. You know, and he made a comeback in 1985, like at age 42, and he looked even bigger and better than ever. I thought he should have won that. Anyways, oh, here we go. But, you know, I don't believe in taking steroids, but that's the thing. You know, but nowadays, I, I think a lot of bodybuilders are down steroids. You can tell by looking at them. That there aren't all natural bodybuilders that just take food supplements and they eat good. And they work out hard. They build their muscles. Now, that's what I'm into. All natural. I, I don't believe in cheating. If you're going to win, if you're going to cheat, don't compete. Hey man, hey, that's that's a mod. If you know, if you're gonna cheat, don't compete. You gotta win it fairly. Like the Bible says, if a man strives for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. And, you know, forgetting that which was behind. In other words, don't mo don't moan and groan over the past failures. You know, get up and try again, like smoking Joe Frazier. You know, Joe Frazier just kept getting up. And there's a man that read his Bible. I, I met him in his gym. I asked him, I said, if, I said, have you asked Jesus to save you? He says, oh, I ask Jesus to save me from my sins every day. You know, so what he meant was that he sins every day. So, you know, I agree with that. But uh, according to what he told me, he asked Jesus to save him. He told me he did. So Joe Frazier saved. He used to read his Bible for his boxing matches, I heard. You know, so uh, he used to go to church a lot. But that does, just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. But as far as I know, you know, because I asked him myself, I asked him if he'd asked Jesus to save him. And he said, he says, yeah, I asked Jesus to save me from my sins every day. But you got to remember, you don't have to do it once, though. 
Jesus paid the price once. Once you ask Jesus in, he stays in. Okay, I, I'm going to get off my soapbox. I know these people as I go, Rock, you want to hear about your monster movies and stuff? Not the preaching. I don't want to preach at you. I'm just sharing with you what I know. I'm not telling you what to do. You, you got to make your own decision to accept Jesus or reject him. But Jesus, I just want you to know Jesus loves you. And he's there. You can call on him and he'll save you. And he'll heal you. I'm not saying you'll get healed just because you ask him. But you have to have faith. You know, and some people just want what they can get from God. They want to get rich and they want to get healed. But they don't give up. They don't ever spend time getting to know him. You know, they don't read the Bible ever. They, they just want, they just want the quick fix. They want to feel good. That's it. They just want to, feel, and they, they want to find things in the Bible that they agree with. No, you're supposed to read the Bible and learn from it and let God change you. you know, the more you get exposed to the Bible, the more God can work on your spirit and change you so you'll have a better attitude and you'll think better. And instead of always trying to be better than the next guy, you can, if somebody else beats you in a competition, you can accept that and congratulate the guy that won instead of, oh, he beat me, I hate him. No, you're supposed to love your opponent. You know, and it's competent. In boxing, yeah, you compete to win. In wrestling, yeah, but it doesn't mean you hate your opponent. That's a bad mindset. That's negative. The Bible says, love your enemies and do good unto them that despitefully use you and persecute you. And I know that's hard. That's easier to say. A lot of times I want to get even too. I admit it. You know, we have that. It's sin in us. But the more you expose out the Bible, the more you're likely to change. That's why I read the Bible every day. You know, I don't spend my time watching all bloody gory horror films. I won't watch Dr. Five's films again because they have too much pole like torture in them. The torture scenes. No, that's not good. I mean, that bothers me. And I will not watch Exorcist ever again. I made a New Year's resolution. Never to watch Exorcist again. I only seen it like twice in my life. It's not an entertaining movie. It's about a real life woman that got possessed by the devil, or a girl that got, a girl that got possessed by the, you know, Mary Rose or whatever. But you know, people, some people, they said, "Oh, have you seen Mary Rose? You should see it." I don't like that stuff. Okay, people think I like that stuff because I make monster movies. No, I make monster comedy movies, and I like the classics. But Black Cat is kind of disturbing because. You know, it's it's sort of loosely based on Aliester Crow Crowley, Aliester Crowley, who was a real life occultist leader. You know, and, and and you know, and I didn't like the parts where Boris plays a Satanist, and he's down in his dungeon, his ba and he's got his dead wives under glass. They're preserved and they're beautiful forever. You know, and then Bela visits him. He goes, "Look at her. She, you know, her beauty is, will live on forever. Or, you know, she, she's beautiful. Well, she's dead. You know." It can, I mean, I would hate to live there knowing that there's dead people down there bare, or under glass. I don't care if they look good. It's not about looking good. It's in the, the soul's gone. That's just their shell. You know, you shouldn't be... That's, that's gross. I'm sorry. And it's not Boris. Boris was great in the movie. I mean, he played the part great. And I know the movie isn't really gross because those are real at live actresses playing those parts. But it's the idea that bothers me of dead people under glass in the basement on display. I, I don't agree with that. Now, I know there's mummies in the museum. That's different, though. Those are mummies. It's there for our learning. It's like thousands of years old. That doesn't bother me. But I'll tell you, when I saw the real mummy boy at Field Museum of Natural History, it grossed me out. When I was on a field trip, when I was like eight years old, I couldn't eat my lunch. Because I kept thinking about that shriveled up mummy boy. And it, it didn't look like Lon Chaney. I was hoping it looked like Lon Chaney or Boris Karloff, you know. Or Christopher Lee. But no, it's all shriveled up, skinny kid, mummy kid. and uh, ugh. See, I couldn't eat my lunch after that. I couldn't. I couldn't even eat my peanut butter sandwich. My mom had like a turkey sandwich with mayonnaise. I couldn't eat it. I usually eat that, but no. I just, I just drank. I, I think I just drank water or soda pop. That's it. You know. Ugh. Just like when I saw that movie called Night and uh, Night and Something. Uh, it's a movie with the Germans. They show it in high school. It's like an educational thing, and they show you. Know, it's called something. And it shows what Hitler did, and uh, people getting buried, and they dig the hole, and they turn their skin into paper, and their teeth they used for jewelry, and uh, their bones they used to make soap, and oh, and they showed it, and they showed their skin used for lamp shades, and oh. Yeah. Real footage that, from, uh, you know, the time of Hitler when he was persecuting the Jews and killing them and burning them. And I had to watch the skinny bodies being dumped in a big hole, you know, treating people like trash. I couldn't eat my lunch, man. I couldn't. They, we had chicken for dinner. I couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat till like the next day. I just drank. I, Mom, I can't eat. Oh, David, finish your dinner. I can't, Mom. I saw that movie. I don't want to eat. <laughs> 
Poor kid. Poor Ryan. Yeah, I was a sophomore. That was when I was 16. I couldn't, I couldn't stomach that. Why did they show us to show up? But, you know, it's educational. You need to know. So you have sympathy on these people and know that that was wrong. You know what Hitler did. I mean, he might have looked good at Mustad, nice uniform, and, you know, the higher Hitler, you know. Sure, people like to make fun of that and stuff. But in reality, you know, he was an evil man. You know, it's, that's like a dictator doesn't care about people. He just wants to be in power. And, oh, he's friends with his fellow soldiers and people that agree with him. But, the other, oh, you know, that's wrong, you know. Cause we're all wrong sometimes. We need to get right. That's why I say I balance it up. Horror film, I read I, after late at night, before I go to bed, at four, I wake up at 4 a.m. I fall asleep during Peter Gunn around 3 or then I wake up at 4.30 in my chair with the TV still on. I wake up, brush my fangs, put my uh, sweatpants on, go to bed, T-shirt. You know, I put my pajama top on, go to lay down my late dad's bed because he's not using it anymore. He died in 2013, but so now I sleep in his bedroom. I use his bed, you know, just a clean bed sheet, you know, but it's the same bed and mattress my dad used. It makes me feel closer to my dad. I mean, you know, hey, it's there. Why let it go away? It's my dad's bed. I read out of his Bible every day. It doesn't have to be his Bible. It's still the King James. Sometimes I read out of my Bible from the Marines, but the point is I read something about a half page to a page of the Bible a day now because I want to know, I want to learn about, I want to learn about Jesus. I don't just want to say, well, I'm saved. I ask Jesus in my heart. No, I want to learn. I want to, I want to learn about God. I want to, and I'm enjoying it. I enjoy reading about David and Goliath again, and I enjoy reading about how Josiah, um, Elijah, Elijah, and then Elisha healed people, and Elisha got a double spirit of Elijah's spirit, because he saw Elisha going up into heaven in a whirlwind, and he he wanted a double portion. That was his desire, not to make money, not to be famous, but he says, I want a double portion of your spirit, and Elisha, Eli, Elijah said, you know, that's kind of a lot to ask, uh, that's not exactly the way he worded it, but, but, but if you see me, if you see me when I go up, uh, then you'll have a double portion. You know, so he saw it. So he got a double portion. of. And by the way, when Elisha died, somebody was, a uh, man was getting buried. And he's buried right next to where Elisha was buried. And the man's dead body touched where one of Elisha's bones rubbed against where his bones were. And the man came back to life and walked around just by his bo dead body touching the bones of Elisha. You know, this is the one that got a double spirit. He had all that power of God in him, even when he was dead physically. See, you know, and when people touch Jesus, they got healed. When they touch his garment, they got healed. Jesus put his hand on you, you, you got your sight back. That would put a lot of these doctors out of business that charge too much. And then they, you know, they, they, they take away some of it, but they don't totally heal you. And then they, 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 they burn away with some cancer with radiation, but then it, sometimes it comes back and sometimes it doesn't or, you know. Or it causes a hip problem because the radiation can wear away on the bone over time. You know, like that M. the Conrad Brooks. It caused him to get a fragile hip because the radiation made his hip bone fragile over constant radiation in that area. Sure, it got rid of a lot of the cancer, but it, it wore away the bone, the radiation. And so that's what I heard. Conrad Brooks, that's, that's sort of what led to him getting a broken hip when he fell out of bed one day. You know, it made his bone more fragile. You know what I'm saying, I got the surgery when I had prostate cancer. They cut it out. So I'm healed. And they, they check me every year, once a year, the GU, they check to see. And they haven't found cancer. They, it's still, like, untraceable. So they say, one more time, it's coming up in June, June 8th or whatever, or June 20th, two days before Monster Bay. They're going to check. And um, if it's still gone, if they don't see anything, they say, yeah, I don't have to come back. They say, I'll probably never get cancer again. <laughs> but I have faith, too. I've asked Jesus to heal me, too. But I went with the surgery because I just wanted to get rid of it before it spread. I just wanted to get rid of it. I'm, I sure wasn't going to talk about that. What I was going to talk about was something else. Okay, I'm going to cut here. I'm going to get myself and I'm going to talk about something else. Something more happy. Okay, okay.